All right, come on. Oh. All right, come on. Beloved Technicals Tinkers here, checking in on the 3D print operations for today, October 7th, 2024. So if you're unfamiliar, I'm a small business owner, um, has a business that has nothing to do with uh, 3D printing, uh, but I've got this warehouse already. I've been interested in 3D printers. And so I'm like, well, maybe if I can prove the concept here at home, generating sales, I can scale it up and put it in my warehouse because I'm already paying those overheads and stuff. Additionally, I've been receiving an education in the 3D print space. It seems like there's sort of a schism between the hobbyist side of 3D printing and the 3D printers that are using it as a tool slash business. I am a firmly in the latter. <laughs> so um, some hobby is coming in. Maybe you have some issues with kind of how I'm doing things or some of my opinions on stuff. I understand completely, but if you're here for like just the hobbyist side and tinkering with 3D printers and stuff like that, I'm not the channel for you. I'm more so concerned with the business and selling things. So what's going on here today? Well, I guess some of the people in the comments that are uh, maybe mad that I'm printing uh, Baphomet dolls and devils and things like that. Let me tell you something. I'm not into that kind of thing. I just want to print things. So I'm not worshiping false idols. I'm just printing them and selling them to heathens. Uh, but I guess karma came around because the other half of the D20 cube actually did fail and it failed pretty miserably and i have no idea why i saw that it stopped and i ran over here thinking it was out of filament plenty of filament but it's just dead stopped right mid print check over here looks like the printer just decided to stop and fuse the uh the hot end right here right before it started the uh the top layer so you know, that's two days of printing just completely down the drain. I have no idea why. Super bummer. It almost certainly probably because I printed a Baphomet or a Devil Doll. And this is God smiting me. But uh, I'm not exactly sure why. I'll turn it, I'll restart it again. But I think it gives me an opportunity to try out all of this. A three kilogram spool. Got this from Sunlu. I mean, I bought it off Amazon. They didn't send it to me. Uh, but I was kind of like tired of refilling filament, some of these bigger mega prints. And so I'm gonna try out this three kilogram spool. I don't think I'll, there's any potential for issue because you know, PLA is PLA at that point when you're running it slow. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's too much in the way of errors and this isn't a high precision print. So I don't know that it really makes that much of a difference. And over here on the A1, our angels came out successfully. Very happy about that. The hair does look, I mean, maybe it's just the lighting. Yeah, it's just the lighting. My office doesn't have great lighting. Uh, the hair is white. It looks kind of gray when I put it down here, but these came out fine. 0.2 on the layer height. I did uh, adaptive layer height, but it's still some terracing here on top. You can see it if you look really up close, but I wanted to do a plate of two of these. I could probably fit three or three sets on this 256 uh, square build plate. Uh, but I really wanted to do this to price out how much these models really cost. And that's mainly because I've kind of been having this sort of like trying to figure out how to actually price a lot of these things, especially art prints. Now I priced it really, really high because it takes so long to print these models, uh, but I'm getting more precise and more reliable prints. So I'm kind of at, at the stage where it's like, okay, I, I know what my filament cost is. I know that my assembly cost and my time is virtually non-existent because I don't have to hand paint these models and I'm not, that's not something I'm ever going to do. Uh, but I really wanted to know, you know, what that total cost is versus like, you know, what is it worth? There's a certain point where it's not worth your time to do anything unless you're like into the passion side of it. And as we covered, I'm not. So I've seen a lot of people say price your 3d prints just based on time. It's like this blanket pricing model that a lot of people employ that seems to actually be kind of in line. And I'm kind of like more interested in it and think I might do it for these little figurine art models. And that's pricing it at a dollar per hour. That might sound kind of insane, but when I do the, the that pricing model and then I add in like, you know, for Etsy fees and shipping fees and cost of the packing material and stuff like that, that means like a full completed angel model, which is, you know, roughly, you know, once she's up, she stands, you know, about here, and she's got, you know, these wings that go on as well. Um, now, I think it's a pretty impressive model. It's not super smooth and factory finished and stamped out of a press, but I think that's kind of why people like it. Plus, this particular model 
you know, you can only get it from that one designer. I mean, you can download it and print it yourself, but a lot of people, I guess, just like to collect these sort of figurines. And so with that dollar per hour, if I do the division, I do the math, you know, cause like if this takes 36 hours, but I printed two of them, that's 18 hours per, how much for the wings, how much for the, all the other stuff that would bring it to about 70 something dollars. And I think that's actually pretty reasonable. Um, you know, it's it, a very interesting model. It's very, you know, sort of detailed and intricate and, you know, sort of the parts and stuff like that. I could see, I mean, I'm not a figurine collector, uh, but I could see like in the $70 range, that being perfectly acceptable, you know, free shipping, obviously. Maybe dial it up like by $5 just to add some extra buffer in there. But uh, I think that's what I might explore. Another thing too, I got the Postomatic Spool Winder all assembled in place. I really like this thing. Um, if you're unfamiliar, I got this because in my bamboo AMS, the cardboard spools, they usually work fine, no issue. But I wanted, uh, I did have some issues where the cardboard spools would bounce around. Some people saying like pieces of cardboard can break off and like get down into the AMS and I don't want that. So I went ahead yesterday, I didn't record it, but I wound one spool's worth of black onto a bamboo spool. Took a little, you know, kind of figuring out. You've got to keep pressure down because this is just kind of help, you know, gravity holds it in place. So if you go too fast, it'll start bouncing out. It won't turn the gears, which means it won't um, run the spooling back forth auger thingy uh, and it won't wind evenly. So it takes a little figuring out, but overall I do like this. Um, someone said, thank you for the suggestion. They make rings, plastic rings that you can just 3D print and put them on the outside of your cardboard spools. Uh, but I, I do kind of like this way uh, to where I just know that it's on a bamboo spool. It's, uh, you know, like, because what if that ring breaks off? And plus those rings, cardboard spools are all a little bit different depending on the manufacturer. And so I kind of do like this. And I'm probably going to explore this a little more in the future and see if it's worth the time. And sort of the final thing I got yesterday, I had posted that I was making a fan shroud for a graphics card, a functional print, you know, a, a, a thing that people buy because they're trying to use it to make money themselves. And so that's like a desirable product classification or, you know, class for me. And so I got that up on my Etsy. You can check the link below if you want to see it. I don't know how many people there's crossover of like hardcore GPU miners that also are watching me, but I got that up. Originally I had done the design to fit uh, the certain card yesterday's video, I mentioned the gap in the card. And so I made it to where it had a bolt hole to hold the fan in place. But I was finding that a lot of the cards in that family, that Tesla Volta family, um, either have a flat back. Um, the card I had in particular had the rear of the card, but the heat sink started out here. And so that's why I made this to butt up against the heat sink. Um, but I don't want to have this product for that type of card and then a flat one for every other type of card and then this, that, and the other. So what I did was I just made one product to rule them all flat back with the adapter piece. And that way, if you have the card, then this just slides in very easily and it makes essentially the exact same thing. And so that way I can sell just one product instead of having two products and then people, you know, you know they accidentally get the wrong thing and then it creates issues because part of scalability, part of, you know, just kind of reducing complexity and being, you know, as, as streamlined as possible is making, is reducing the amount of CRM, the amount of post-sale support that's required. Um, customer service is not a good, is not something that you want to do in business. It's not, it, I mean, in an ideal world, the customer does business with you, gets what they want, you get money, they're happy, you're happy. And then they come back later when they want to do that same process again. You don't want to have them coming back with issues or things that you have to fix. Um, you know, certainly you want to handle that if it does occur. So you have a positive perception and, you know, it doesn't lead to negativity down the road. But in my determination, it's probably better to sell this into two pieces and then people can just buy one unified product. The pricing, um, I'm trying to stay in line. I put this on eBay as well because that seems where most of them are sold. Um, and I just came in with like, I was kind of looking at some other people's comparable products, came in a little bit cheaper, uh, established my shipping rate to be the same. On Etsy, it's actually, I believe, cheaper than it is on eBay. Um, and there are options to add more for volume discount there. So 
We'll see which uh, which pans out. But I saw on eBay people have sold you know many hundreds of these at what I think is a, a very inflated price. But again, like you know, this should cost like five dollars, but it's not worth anyone's time to sell anything for five dollars because if you have to take this and put it in a box and tie up the box and print a shipping label and put it on there, your time that you've put into that is at minimum a minute, at like an absolute minimum, a minute, 90 seconds, two minutes. Um, that's, that's just not worth it because if you do the math on that, even if you did that nonstop all day, you know, you're making like what, 60 bucks an hour, I mean, before, before expense. So it's just not worth it at a certain point. So originally I had done two of these in a two pack for like 20 something dollars. But then in the end, I saw everyone else is selling theirs for like 20 bucks for one. And I'm like, I'm just going to come in a little bit under that. And if that's what happens, then I'm going to go from there because I'm still in the startup phase. I'm still moderately scrappy uh, to where I want to generate those sales. And so again, I like functional prints, but I don't really care for these like small functional prints. I'd like to look at something that's a little more involved or complex or you know, volume based kind of things. Cause really only people need like a few of these. I'd like to maybe sell stuff where people need like you know, at a minimum 10 of these, 20 of these, whatever. Uh, I'd certainly like to do that because again, it's, I think a lot of people don't think about it being worth their time. You know, they get caught up in the, you know, like the analysis paralysis of evaluating like, well, my profit margins on this are a thousand percent. I'm like, yeah, well, a thousand percent of 10 cents is $10. And it's like, it's not really worth the time. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I do this pricing, as I do these products, as I look to what sort of products I want to continue doing. So that's a 3D print update for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know, are you on the hobbyist side of 3D printing? Are you on the business side of 3D printing? Or maybe you're just kind of aspiring to do that and you're kind of watching this for maybe inspiration or just to see how some other idiot is doing things. Let me know what you're doing in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.